Hi and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to talk about Key Insight 4, Increasing Technologically Powered Experiences. Well, with this whole advancement of technology, we're going to see artificial intelligence, which is basically computers trying to mimic the human brain, the functionality of the human brain, play a major role in e-commerce by improving the efficiency of the business decisions, providing more data and insights to support the decision-making process, automating repetitive mundane tasks, freeing up a significant number of man hours in processes like procurement, drive, cost, level, and things like that. So what AI is going to do is it's going to enhance human capabilities. And first, it will start by automating repetitive mundane tasks. So basically all the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, which is repetitive. So things like checking certain items, checking against the inventory, taking stock. So all these things can be automated very easily using AI capabilities right now. And then the next advanced level would be to supplement decision making, to provide more data and insight on decision making. So we have things like decision support systems to help businesses make decisions. So it does not make decisions, but it gives certain perspectives, an unbiased perspective on what happens if you make decision A and what happens if you take decision B and it gives you a pro and cons from an unbiased perspective so that you can make the best decision with the data. And also if you don't have sufficient data to make a decision, AI systems are able to gather data and provide you with data and insights on how things can be done. Because it's a very hyper competitive world today, we can't afford to make decisions on assumptions. We need real data to make decisions. So AI will definitely be able to address and complement human understanding of data and interpretation. Then we have things like omnichannel presence and support driven by technology. So using things like screen sharing, co-browsing, which means getting an employee and a customer together to browse and select products, video calls, and other collaboration tools to engage with the customer. So during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns, we saw a lot of businesses switch into online models and a lot of these tools gaining mass amount of adoption rates because they had to use and adapt to thrive in the new normal or new environment. So we will see these tools getting further traction and adoption rates and eventually stagnating after the economy is open up or people are more comfortable meeting and doing in-person interactions. Then we have things like big data analytics and AI driven personalization. So personalization is amazing. Getting exactly what you want, exactly the way you want it as well. So imagine a world where you can upload your designs and get your t-shirts printed exactly, made exactly to your body specifications. Imagine a shoe where you can get your exact specification and personalization and get it sorted. It will also sort a lot of health problems if you have health problems with your feet or ankles or anything of that sort. But doing it at a scale where everyone shoe is personalized to their own specifications is impossible because it's not financially feasible and the technology is complex and hard to use. But we are getting there because now we have things like additive manufacturing or what we call 3D printing, which is able to give that level of personalization for each customer while keeping a very low cost. So it's financially feasible as well. So using these technological tools and capabilities, it's now possible to deliver personalization to every customer in a financially feasible manner as well. Then we talk about things like big data analytics. It's now able to analyze all the customer touch points. For example, whenever a customer interacts with the social media, whenever a customer visits a physical store or your website or lots of interactions with the customer support agents and all those things can be captured, stored and analyzed to get a much more deeper and a richer understanding of customer behavior. And all these things can be consolidated and aggregated to get a much more deeper sense of customer segmentation. So if you have 100,000 customers for your business, how can you segment them into different different groups so that you can target those specific groups in a very special manner and also ensure that they buy from the business and are loyal to the business. So all these things can be done by using big data solutions, which is available right now. Then we have things like M-commerce or mobile commerce. So using wireless handheld devices like smartphones and tablets to perform transactions via the internet. So it includes buying and selling of products and services, online banking, paying utility bills and things of that sort. So mobile commerce will also play a major role in the future because we are seeing a lot of developing countries focus on mobile first approach where you focus on mobile first because they can't afford to buy expensive laptops, desktops, and computers. And also the main thing is their mobile penetration or smartphone penetration is so much higher than other types of 
technology devices like computers. So if you're planning on a mobile commerce or m-commerce first approach, there are things that you need to sort because you need to focus on very quick loading time of your websites or you need to have some sort of app to interact with the user, which is much more preferred. And also you need to engage with the user using very famous or very common messaging platforms like WhatsApp. Then there's things like Internet of Things. So we're going to talk about IoT in one of our next lectures. So it's basically internet connected sensors and devices. So internet connected devices are providing real time telemetric data. So telemetric data is things like temperature, humidity, GPS location, sound levels and things like that. And when you have real time input from systems like that, you can make real time decisions. For example, if your company is a logistic provider and you have a fleet of vehicles and you can fix GPS sensors to them, which will provide real time data and telemetric data on the location of each vehicle. And then you can use things like artificial intelligence to optimize their delivery routes and reduce carbon emissions and do so much more with it. Then we have things like the rise of conversational marketing. So things like chatbots, live chat, mobile messaging services provided by e-commerce platforms, providing a much richer customer experiences so basically when you have a chat agent who is always available to address your issues you really feel that the company actually cares about your problem and not just selling you a product or a service so as a business it's really important to drive custom experiences innovative custom experiences or what we call delightful custom experiences forward because customers are the only reason that you are in business in the first place. So by incorporating these kind of innovative technologies like chatbots and live chat, it will give you a very quick return on investment because unlike other technologies, you can significantly notice the level of responsiveness of these technologies. Then we have things like image search. So searching using images and products related to the image. So if you're a customer, you are walking down the street and you see something interesting like a shoe and you want to capture it with your phone and then you want to upload it and find out what the product is. Same with things like cosmetics because you want to try out different things which you might fancy. So it's really important to have kind of image search as well in your app or website to drive customers who are curious about finding out what your product is. Then we have things like customized design and artwork uploading. So Having able to upload your artwork and get your own personalized wallpaper or couch or any kind of design cushion covers or something like that, it's really amazing. So it can be done with technology today. Then we are going to see the rise of e-wallets and cryptocurrencies. So moving forward from cash on delivery and credit cards to e-wallets and cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is proving itself as a valuable platform and eventually a lot of technologies, a lot of businesses are going to be built around it. So the primary technology behind Bitcoin is called blockchain technology, which we're going to talk about in one of our next lectures. So it's seeing many different commercial applications from logistic industry to ensure supply chain traceability and transparency. Then things like financial industry, insurance industry, and a lot more other applications of blockchain technology. Then CIAM, or what we call custom information access and management. So maintaining proof of how, when, where, and why you collect and process customer data, maintaining transparency and ensures compliance with frameworks like GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation, primary target in the European Union. Then we have CCP or California Consumer Privacy Act. Then we have HIPAA or Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act for healthcare providers and healthcare related systems. Then we have COPA, so Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. So all these compliance frameworks and regulation frameworks can be strictly enforced with the use of what we call check gates or security gates to ensure that all the data breaches are captured, analyzed, processed, as well as action taken against those kind of malpractices as well. Well, that's about it for Key Insight 4, increasing technologically powered experiences. I'll see you on another lecture.